Hello, I am Cesar Rodriguez, and I am an associate professor at Mount Sinai School of Medicine, and I'm the clinical director of the myeloma program. Multiple myeloma is a rare disease, or it's considered a rare disease because it's only affecting about 3% of the population with cancer. And it is a type of cancer uh, from the blood. There's three main types of blood cancers, leukemias, lymphomas, and multiple myeloma. And uh, myeloma is derived from a, a blood cell called plasma cells that produces a protein. And normally this protein helps our immune system. It's an antibody that helps fight infections or bacteria, viruses, or foreign things that are found in the body and signals the rest of the immune system to come and destroy it. But whenever somebody has multiple myeloma, these plasma cells are abnormal, are mutated. They don't follow any orders or signals from the body. And the protein that they produce does not help fight infections. On the contrary, these cells are multiplying and the, all of the cells that are produced from the original abnormal cell are going to be producing these protein that doesn't function. Uh, we call it an M protein or an M spike or fragments of these proteins, which we call free light chains. And the more of these proteins or fragments of the light chains uh, we see in the blood, the more of that can cause damage to the kidney and can lead to kidney damage. Now, the, these abnormal plasma cells or myeloma cells in the bone marrow, as they continue to grow and expand, they can cause bone lesions, bone pain, can lead to bone fracture. And as it chews the bone so that it can have more space, it can release the calcium that's in the bone into the blood and can cause high calcium. Now, as the, these abnormal cells continue to take over the bone marrow, they can also take up space for healthy cells to grow and produce healthy blood. And as the healthy cells have less space to grow, then you can develop anemia. So anemia, high calcium, bone lesions, kidney damage are common things that we see in patients who have multiple myeloma. Another thing, since it's affecting the immune system, is frequent infections. This disease is hard to identify. And a lot of the times it takes us some time to come up with a diagnosis of multiple myeloma because the most common side effects or symptoms of uh, myeloma are fatigue, bone pain or back pain. And it tends to affect people who are in their 60s and 70s. And at that age, a lot of, a lot of the patients are gonna have back pain. A lot of the patients are gonna feel tired. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint a diagnosis in, in these patients. Multiple myeloma tends to affect men more than women. It tends to affect the black community more than any other ethnicity. And it, takes, it tends to affect patients who are in their late 60s and in their 70s compared to young um, adults. Now, people who have been exposed to Agent Orange or who have been exposed to large amounts of radiation or who are um, obese or very overweight or who actually um, were exposed or were involved in certain specific things like helping at 9-11 um, and Ground Zero, or who were at Camp Lejeune, or who have been exposed to radioactive materials could have a higher risk of developing multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma is not considered an inherited disease. It's not something that uh, you inherit from your parents. There's a very, very small percentage of uh, myeloma that's called familial multiple myeloma. It's uh, less than 2%. So this is a type of blood cancer that we do not consider it being something that you inherit from your parents. Now, having said that, if you do have a family member with cancer, automatically you do have a higher risk of developing a cancer, whether it be multiple myeloma or another type of cancer. So that's something just to keep in mind. And if you do have a family member with myeloma, it is important to go and have your annual checkups and make sure that your doctor is doing a proper physical exam, doing the pl proper blood work to make sure that if you do develop multiple myeloma that it's detected at an early time. Multiple myeloma does not have any screening tests like in breast cancer that you do a mammogram or in colon cancer that you do a colonoscopy. Uh, and there's many reasons why that is. In 5% of patients or people who have the age of 50 or higher are gonna have an abnormal protein in the blood, uh, which we call a paraprotein. 
And a lot of the times we associate this paraprotein to multiple myeloma, but that's not necessarily true. There's many other reasons that can cause an elevated paraprotein or an abnormal protein in the blood, chronic inflammation, viral infections, vaccines that can transiently cause an elevation in, 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 a, in a protein as a natural reaction, um, allergies, uh, stress and some medications. And then there's other types of cancers that can cause this paraproteinemia, like breast cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, leukemias. So it's really not a clear uh, marker that can indicate multiple myeloma. In order to have a good screening test, you need to have a good um, biomarker or a good test that can help predict the, the risk of a specific cancer. And we don't have that for multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma has very vague symptoms. You can have fatigue, you can have bone pain, uh, back pain. You could just feel more tired than usual or run down. And these are very vague symptoms that could indicate anything just from being overworked or from being aging or from anything, to be honest. So there really isn't a specific symptom for myeloma. Now, a lot of the times this disease is detected in routine exams, whether you go to your primary care doctor to have your annual checkup and your kidney function is not working well, or you have a um, degree of anemia that's not explained, or you have a very high uh, level of protein, um, those could lead to then a further workup to diagnose myeloma. But a lot of the times we find multiple myeloma incidentally because people are getting x-rays for other things or imaging studies for other things, and we incidentally find a, a bone lesion. So since I started focusing on multiple myeloma back in 2014, I have participated in at least 15 clinical trials, and some of them have not given any positive results and we've had to shut them down. But there have been other clinical trials that have actually caused a significant uh, improvement in the care of myeloma. And now uh, we've been able to say that myeloma is behaving more like a chronic disease. So some clear examples are of studies that have participated is a maintenance therapy. Uh, before we had no idea how to treat myeloma to try to keep it from coming back since we can't cure it. And we did a study to do maintenance therapy with lenalidomide and found out that doing maintenance lenalidomide really increases uh, overall survival, but at the same time helps um, keep a patient in remission for a longer period of time. Another study that uh, I've participated in is the addition of monoclonal antibodies to treatment. And one of those in particular being daratumumab and how daratumumab is being incorporated um, as a shot in the belly subcutaneously instead of through the vein and also given upfront in therapy and newly diagnosed patients. And right now we are working on immunotherapy and using the immune system of a patient to help train it or guide it so it can uh, kill multiple myeloma. And just a couple of weeks ago, um, one of the drugs that we've been working on, uh, teclistimab, was approved in Europe and we're hoping to get approval of that in the United States um, in the next weeks. So as you can see out of all of the studies that I've participated in, some were failures, some have actually been uh, impacting and have changed the way we treat myeloma nowadays. And there's others that are still in the works. Uh, unfortunately, some studies do require a lot of years in order to gather data and get outcomes and we just need to be patient. Anybody can access information to clinical trials in a series of ways. One is asking your doctor directly. It is very, very prudent and advisable that you talk to your doctor and be comfortable enough to ask the question, are there any clinical trials available for me uh, or that could benefit me uh, right now or in the future? There's also a lot of support groups uh, that are have information of the clinical trials that are ongoing either in your area or across the country. And that way you can get information about what's going on, not just close to you, but around the world as well, and see if there's something that might be appealing or attractive or that could fit your uh, needs. And then there's foundations that dedicate a lot of their effort at reaching out to patients and helping them 
guide them to what clinical trials could potentially be of benefit uh, to you. So organizations that, like the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation, the International Myeloma Foundation, um, Myeloma Crowd and Crowd Care, Health Tree, uh, all of these organizations can help. Uh, but also if you look at the Mount Sinai website and the Myeloma uh, website itself, you can see clinical trials that we have available and access to to those trials. Multiple myeloma is a cancer that a lot of people don't know much about. And it's a very variable type of cancer. It, if you, one person with myeloma is not gonna behave the same as another person with myeloma. So if for some reason you've been diagnosed with multiple myeloma, it's important to hear other people out, but keep in mind that each patient is very unique and they do very differently. So don't get influenced necessarily by what other people uh, have done or their experience, but always talk to your doctor, talk to your family, and uh, talk to organizations and foundations so that you can have all the information possible. You can't never go wrong by asking uh, for more information and learning more about this disease. And if you're a family member, be supportive, learn about that disease so you know how you could potentially help a patient with multiple myeloma or a family member with myeloma and be there for them. Because nowadays myeloma has become a chronic disease and it's like diabetes or cholesterol or high blood pressure that as long as it's controlled, you can live almost normal life and um, have a, enjoy the rest of your life.